All right, everybody, welcome. Welcome to the week. I hope you're doing great. This reading is one of my favorite readings to do every week because it kind of doesn't really matter what your zodiac sign is. <laughs> Just if the message, whatever the title is, because I don't know what it is yet. You can see it. I can't. Uh, it hasn't been determined yet. So in, you're on a different timeline than I am because you can see the title and I can't yet. So. <laughs> All right, let's see where we go. This is a very powerful week that we are standing at the precipice of. Um, as you well know, there is a new moon in Aries, zero degrees Aries, almost one degree, but really it's zero degrees, uh, zero degrees Aries. And the coolest thing about that is that the new moon obviously brings in the new astrological year and there's just this fresh energy. We've got Pluto moving into Aquarius whenever a planet like that, any big planet, any massive planet, any important planet shifts signs, especially the slower moving ones. Ugh, it's like moving from it's moving from an Earth sign Capricorn into an air sign. So it's like a whoosh, right? There's going to just be this feeling of that. And so this week is super important. The thing I was saying about the new moon in Aries is in April, we have another new moon in Aries, 29 degrees Aries. So what you manifest this week can manifest very quickly, all right? Especially with Pluto moving in to Aquarius. I'll talk more about these happenings this week. It is the... Um, it is the spring equinox in the northern hemisphere, the fall hem equinox in the southern hemisphere. It is equal day, equal night. So we are in balance, right? Aries. Aries is me and Libra is we. Libra is the opposite sign of Aries. So there's just this very nice energy of what do I need? What do I want to pursue? What do I want to create? And then we are also um, activating Libra energy, which is about the we. How do we do that? How do we as individuals um, gain our personal power and still balance it with the we, with the collective? So that's a lot of uh, what's going on. I am going to be doing this week for the Ascension group. We are going to be manifesting perfect timing on Wednesday. Uh, the new moons are really strong right after they hit their peak. So the next few days are really important. So the new moon on the 20th or 21st is going to be very powerful. 22nd, 23rd, 24th. And of course, Pluto moves into Aquarius on the 23rd. So you do the math. It's like massive power, new beginnings. What do you want? All right. So take today, whenever you're watching this, Sunday, Monday, take today. What is it that you want to ma uh, manifest in your life? Wow. This is a 22 card. Joy. How about that? Is that a good idea? Hummingbird spirit. Yes, it is. I think it's a good idea. Wow. Spirit guardian of winter retreat. We're at the very tail end of you, winter. You only got another day or two to go. And growth. Toadstools. You can see all around, there's still something hanging on. All right. There's still something hanging on because winter is in the mid midst of this growth and joy and spring, right? There's still something hanging on. I mean, it could be as mundane as weather still hanging on. Um, some people who don't want to lose their power are still hanging on. Um, this week is like a whoosh. I mean, I, I just, I can't even express to you how strong the Aries is, the Aries energy is, and then Pluto. Aries is about leadership and taking charge, taking action. Pluto moving into Aquarius is about power. Where do you get your power and where do you lose your power? Aquarius says to me um, that your power is going to come from your uniqueness, your ability to invent, your ability to renovate or completely create from the bottom up, right? Pluto, we could like tower the whole thing and let's start from the ground up. That's going to bring a lot of power. Okay, that's going to bring you a lot of power. Whatever, whatever you've been wanting to create, it's time to do that. Whatever you feel has been holding you back, uh, it's time to really um, step into that Aries energy and uh, m uh, manifest with this new, mo new moon, but also kind of leverage that, that Pluto energy moving into Aquarius. Our uniqueness is our power, is our strength. Okay, all right. So let's see where we go here. What is happening? All right, Seven of Swords. Look at this. 
the Four of Cups, and then here's that Libra energy opposite of Aries, balance. Balance, baby, balance. And I do see the Temperance card, and I also see the Sun card. All right, there are world cards there too. Uh, <laughs> so this is, if you have been running away from something or not sure how to get out of a stuck situation, um, this week is going to be very good energy for you because you're going to be really wanting to uh, manifest joy, manifest growth. And that's, I know that that's more big picture, but I think that's a really powerful way to look at it. Um, I think sometimes we, we manifest something very specific and that's fine. There's plenty of reasons to do that. But I feel like what's being asked of us this week is to manifest from a place of, I want joy. Okay. Well, what does that look like? Universe, help me, help me move into joy. What brings me joy? What is it? What is it? Right? So we're going to be looking at that. Also, if you've been running away from things, uh, I feel like getting balanced and standing your ground because Pluto is about power and the Aries energy is about taking action and taking charge in your own life. That's a really important thing. The temperance card and the sun card, it's like, I am definitely going towards something that brings me joy. No question about it. Beautiful. So let's see what the reading holds in store here. Four of swords. Six of Pentacles, there's the Emperor. Very interesting. Four of Wands. So we got, th we got the Emperor and the Four of Wands and the Four of Cups. Lots of fours. Oh, and the Four of Swords. What are you talking about? Um, the one that's not here yet is the Four of Pentacles. That might show up. The Seven of Cups right in the middle. The Queen of Swords. Empress, Emperor, Empress. Masculine, Feminine. Wheel of Fortune. Eight of Swords. Wow, I can't let that stay there. Okay, Strength. Um, so this is about getting out of your confused mindset, your lack of clarity around things. Um, I feel like that exists because there's some things that still need a little bit of healing. So this would be a good day, whenever you see this, this would be a really good day to either ask for help or be uh, benevolent, be uh, um, giving in such a way, learn to give from a place of power, learn to, be, to shift into service. Okay, there's a lot of people. We are, uh, in April, we're gonna start the refresh of the spiritual business class, Operation Launch, all right? So that's coming up. There's a link in the description box below if you wanna join us for that. If you wanna build your spiritual business, gain some power, take action. I feel like there's a, some things that need to be healed. It's like a shift. It's a shift from how do I make money to how do I be of service? What's the most service? How can I provide more service? There, that's a little bit weirder, less weird. Um, how can I provide um, healing information that brings people power, that moves people out of their confusion, that moves them toward, you know, out of their uh, stuck mindsets? I think it is going to take courage for a lot of people right now. Uh, the Pluto energy, if you've been working with your own. Uh, growth, spiritual path for a long time or even for, you know, a short time, uh, but you're making progress, you're way ahead of the game. I feel like there's a lot of people on this planet who are not going to be able to align with the new energy and it's going to give them a lot of stress. Uh, old structures of power, uh, old ways of being in power and all of that, I feel like that is getting blown up. That's getting it's getting seen as not being powerful, okay? So um, it's kind of the shifting of the times, moving Pluto moving into Aquarius, the shifting of the times, the innovations that are happening much more quickly are bringing us all individual power and those, those old structures, the, the platforms, the behemoths, the, the powers that be in the, in the ivory towers and things like that. I feel like that power is waning all right, the individual power is on the rise. Uh, what it is that you want to create and what do you want to heal? What do you want to do for you? And if you put that through the lens of service, what am I here to do? I'm here to be of service. Okay, so I'm healing things that block me from being of service. And then how do I create something that is powerful for myself, that is uh, service oriented for people and um, 
being supportive of other people's growth. How do I do that? I think for a long time, there's been this sense of I'm running away from a thing that isn't working anymore, or I'm running away from an experience that is an old school kind of block, right? An old school kind of paradigm, a mindset that's old school. Uh, the day has come. This is the week, the fated destined week of stepping into our power here with the strength card. And I do feel like for a lot of people, it's going to, for some, it's going to take more courage than others. Okay. I feel like there's a, a disconnect in the world right now about people thinking people of people who are not really doing their healing work, not really sort of embracing their spiritual path, thinking that being of service to other people is weak or somehow uh, that means that I'm not going to get mine kind of thing. That paradigm is shifting. Okay. We are now going to see that we are stronger. If, if I'm strong, it's my job to bring you up. If you're strong, it's your job to bring other people up and not in a way of doing it for them, but sort of like, okay, how can I be of service? How can I make my gifts, put my gifts at the disposal of everyone who needs them and I don't get to decide who that is. You get to decide if this is meaningful for you or not meaningful for you. The Emperor and the Empress here is about um, opening one's heart to love. I feel like some of you have been blocking your heart from love because of a twin flame, because of a disastrous divorce or a terrible situation. I don't think you see that that broken heart is keeping you from um, compassion and higher vibration love. I don't think you see, I don't think people are making that connection. Um, that for me to, you know, I get a lot of comments about why are you always talking about love? Who cares about love? I want to talk about my mission. But if there's a broken heart under there, if there's a pushing away of love as a concept, as an idea, as a theory, uh, and like that, that's very much a thought form in your head that needs to shift and that needs to be released because love is the thing that connects us all. Love is the thing that is going to bring us, uh, together on this planet and raise the vibration. Love is more than how you might be defining it. If, <clears throat> if you're thinking about love as a one-to-one -one relationship or even as a love between individuals. What I'm talking about is love of mankind. I'm talking about love, you know, in terms of kindness, generosity, spiritual union with the divine. I'm talking about love in such a big way that when people do show up in this life as a love partner or as somebody who, you know, a mother loving a child or uh, friends loving friends or, um, you know, going to work in a nonprofit because, you know, you're wanting to create that energy of compassion with other people and help help them move through their life and get to the place where they can do it for other people, too. I, I feel like that's, uh, you know, those two things are not disconnected. If someone comes into your life and makes a pathway for you to love, that's in service to humanity. It just is because think about a time when you were in love and think about the energy of that, about walking around smiling and saying hello to everybody and just being like, hello, I'm here. This is awesome. That benefited everybody around you. And I think there has been, and you know, we've all gone through it where we're like, no, down with love. Love is awful. Love is just a, love is a tease. Love is terrible. Everybody's a narcissist, all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> I want you to, if that has been your mindset, there is something really to heal this week so that you can step more into the, um, the energy of compassionate love from this very, very powerful vantage point of Aries new moon of the vernal equinox, the spring equinox in the Northern Hemisphere of Pluto changing signs from Capricorn into Aquarius. There's nothing stronger than love on this planet. And 
I also feel like the bigger lesson here is not is to expand your view of love. Once you expand that view of love, love flows into you in all different ways. So I do feel that. And I also feel um, I will do my weekly twin flame reading over on Souls on Fire, my other channel. And, you know, one of the things that the twin flame journey <clears throat> is about is about showing you what love is from a very, very high vantage point. It's also sh teaching you to love yourself. It's teaching you to not look to external uh, people or um, experiences for your own validation. It's teaching people about service. It's teaching people about God. It's teaching people about our spiritual nature. All of these things are true. And when you go through your twin flame journey, some of you are in the middle of it. Some of you have finished it. Some of you haven't even started it yet. If you're on the twin flame journey and you're called to that information, then you're, then that's part of your path. Okay. And some of us who have already completed that journey. And I, I know as soon as I said the word, I was like, Oh, don't say completed. But, um, as soon as you've completed, uh, the major cycle of that twin flame journey, what is going to happen is lots of smaller cycles, lots of things, lots are going to connect for you. Lots of dots will be connected. Lots of understandings about, uh, being in that higher vibration and being of service, shifting to being of service. So some of you may feel very neutral, um, about your twin flame journey. You know, I've been through that. It's closed up for me. That happened a long time ago. Um, interestingly enough, the last time that Pluto changed signs, uh, it changed signs from Sagittarius into Capricorn in 2008. Everybody remember 2008? Yeah. So we've done, this has been now, um, not 20 years, but uh, 15, 18 years of us working on the boring stuff, working on the structure, working on creating our own um, uh, financial stability, our emotional stability, whatever Capricorn is. It's like I've done the work, I've put in the time, I've put in the effort. 2008, my job disappeared. I got divorced, I sold the house back to my ex-husband and I left Maine, all within three months. <sighs> Gone, right? So that adventure, that Sagittarian adventure that I had been on for that previous 15 years, 20 years or so, disappeared, okay? Disappeared overnight and in the energy and as we moved into Pluto or into uh, Capricorn, the energy of, okay, now MJ, you've got to make your own structure. You've got to build a business. You've got to build your own financial security. You've got to build your, your house and home. You've got to make, do all the boring decisions, get the insurance, you know, do the will, go to the doctor, do all these things. Maybe not go to the doctor because that wasn't really as, uh, for, as a forefront piece, but it's becoming that way. You know what I mean? Like as you get older. But anyway, so doing all the boring stuff, that's what has been asked of you over the past 15 or 18 years. I want you to look in your birth chart and look where a Capricorn is and then look where Aquarius is right next door, right? Sagittarius, 2008, it moved into Capricorn in 2008. You saw what happened to the banking industry. You saw what happened to lots of industries that were not built on steady ground. They're built on shaky ground. Anything built on shaky ground, boop, okay? So over the last 15 years, what has happened in your life? Look at Capricorn in your chart. Where is it? Where is it? What house is it in? That will tell you what part of your life has been most impacted. And as it moves into Aquarius, uh, that's a new part of your life, right? That's a new house, a different experience. So where is that? Mine has moved from the third house into the fourth house. Pluto is moving into my fourth house. All right. So if you want to discuss that, I have a birth chart mastery, uh, ongoing mentorship. If you want to join, then you can understand how these transits are going to impact you. What does it look like for me? How am I going to deal with the Aries energy? Where's Aries in your chart? Do you know where Aries is in your chart? 
minds in seven times. House of relationships. So that's the part of my life could be the most impacted. It's really interesting to kind of make these connections. So I'm offering you an invitation to come and join us in that. Also, um, the Accelerate Your Ascension group this week. We are going to be manifesting with the moon on Wednesday. I'm going to do a meditation for you. I'm going to give you a ritual about manifesting. And so if you want to come along and join us, that would be awesome. This definitely feels like fate and destiny are rolling through. And it would be great to know, to have a little heads up about what might happen for you. Okay? So I'm going to continue on and see what happens for the collective as we roll into this week. This week is definitely going to be about the winter retreating, the winter going away, the spring coming in, the feeling of freshness, the feeling of newness. I like it. I like it. All right. Link is below if you want to continue on with me. Let's see where we go with this. See you over there. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. If it was helpful to you, please consider liking this video and sharing it with anybody who might have a need for similar kind of information. And if you like this video, check out these videos.